Hello, Royals, and welcome to Instinctively Royal. I am so glad you guys are here with me. I'm excited for today's talk. If you haven't been following for the month of February, our theme is Fight for Love. So the first week, we fought against bitterness and resentment towards men. The second week, we fought against pornography. And last week, we were supposed to fight against entertainment, but I didn't post, and I apologize. But that's what we'll be talking about in this video. But before we start, I just want to pray for you guys. I felt in my spirit that I need to pray for you, so I'm just going to pray for you. Father God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for who you are, Father God. We thank you for your unconditional love, Father God. You are a God that loves us past everything we have done, and we thank you for that. I want to pray for these people right now, Father God, that you would cover them in your blood, Father God. Cover them in your blood, Father God. Hold them, uphold them, Father God, with your righteous right hands, Father God. I just want them to know that they're loved unconditionally, no matter what life has thrown at them, no matter what they have done. You love them unconditionally. And so I thank you for that fact and that truth, and I pray that they will carry that with them for the rest of their lives. We thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so we'll just get started. So we are going to address entertainment's fight on love. If you know me, you know I love entertainment. I love movies. I love K-dramas. I love TV. I love Broadway. I love music. I love it all to the point that I want to create it. I just love the way that it ignites our imaginations, and I love it. But I also know that entertainment these days is actually, there's some entertainment that is teaching us wrong. It just is. It's teaching us wrong. It's showing us stuff about ourselves that is not true. And one of the things that I think it's teaching us wrong in is love. It's teaching us how to love wrong. That's my personal opinion and I actually think it's true. And so I just want to address that. And just a disclaimer, it's not all entertainment that is. There's some really good entertainment and we know that. But we also know that there's some entertainment that is teaching us some shenanigans. So I just want to have a chit chat with you guys today. So it's just going to be chit chatty and I have a list of things and I just want to, I just want to address the list. So we're going to go ahead and start. So this is what I believe entertainment is teaching us. So the first, it is teaching us that love is conditional. It's teaching us that there is a condition for you to love me or there's a condition for me to love you. And I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. The word of God says that God's love is unconditional. It doesn't matter what I do. He loves me. That's the kind of love that we need to have. We need to love people, not on a condition. I don't have to be the bomb.com. I don't got to be this God is a perfection for you to love me. If that's, if that's what it takes, then I'm sad. I don't think I'll ever be loved because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And if there's a condition for you to love me, that's an issue. Number two is teaching us that if love is an easy dip, if anything gets hard, if anything, if there's a bump in the road, then we could dip. Like love needs to be smooth or else I'm out. Y'all, that's not real love. Love is not easy. There are going to be dips and bumps. There are going to be issues. We have to learn how to stick it through. We need a generation that doesn't just dip at the sign of trouble or our difficultness. No, we stick it out. We fight for things. One of the things that is teaching us is that um, as husbands and wives, and this is just a side note, as husbands and wives, if we don't like each other, then we could just dip. All right, divorce. I don't like you anymore, divorce. That's that's not it. The Bible gives specific instructions for marriage and even for divorce. Like there's certain things, reasons why you can, but it's not just because I don't like you. No, marriage and love is supposed to be like this. Sometimes I'm going to like you, sometimes I'm not. But my action of love is what's going to keep our marriage, okay? So let's just know that. Also, number three, that people, entertainment makes marriage boring, okay? It is boring. It's doom and gloom, nagging, just the worst, like jump off a bridge worse. That is not what marriage is supposed to be. That's not how God created it. Y'all, I don't want entertainment's vision of marriage. I want God's version of marriage. Marriage is not boring. It's not supposed to be boring. It's not supposed to be a nag fest. It's not supposed to be like, man, I have a roommate. No, it's supposed to be romantic and loving and awesome. And we're fighting together in together against the things that are coming against us. Again, it's a three strand cord. So it's me, my husband and God. And it's supposed to be an adventure for the rest of our life. That is what it's supposed to be. Even with the difficulties that like there's going to be difficulties and there's going to be hard times, but we're in this adventure together and we love each other. Even sometimes if we don't like each other, we love each other. That is marriage. Okay. I'm just letting y'all know. And again, I don't, I have to learn marriage. I've never been married, but I know that God created it for good stuff. So just let you know. Oh, also too, um, read Sans Solomon. It's very sexual. Just let you know, but that's marriage. Okay. It's supposed to be that. Don't talk about marriage being boring. Marriage is supposed to be fun and just, mm, okay. Just let you know. Number three, this thought of microwave love, that love just happens instantly and there's no merit to it. There's not, there's nothing upholding it. I don't want that kind of love. I don't want this microwave love that tastes like microwave hamburger instead of a hamburger and a skillet. Okay. I, or on the grill. Ooh, grilled hamburgers 
are better than microwave hamburgers and they have some merit to it, if that makes sense. Number four, and this is big for me, okay? Entertainment teaches us that our hearts are test runs. Like you can test run my heart like you test run a car. Or like you can use my heart and try it on and take it off like you try and close at the store. No siree, no siree. My heart is not for your test run. We have to be more careful of people's hearts, y'all. Hearts are so important and it holds so much emotions. It could break us or make us. So no, my heart is not your test run. Number five, this is huge. Now y'all might disagree with me, but I believe I'm right on this, okay? Entertainment teaches us that if you are dating someone, and I mean in like we're boyfriend and girlfriend, that you're still available to other people. Like you're, you're still on the market. What? If I have a boyfriend, you think that if we're not married, he's still on the market, you're wrong. As long as he has a girlfriend or vice versa, that person is not on the market until they break up. The thing is, we wouldn't want that to happen to us, okay? Like if I have a boyfriend and you looking at him, let me tell you something, sister. He ain't on the market and don't you think he on the market? So yeah, we've got we to gotta stop that, y'all. Coveting after other people's boyfriends and girlfriends. What? No. Like, no. And husbands and wives. No. Off market, okay? Off market, look somewhere else, go to a different store. That is period.com. Oh, okay. Number six, this is huge. Love is self-seeking. Entertainment is teaching us that love is about us, about what we need, about our pleasures, about self-seeking. Like, we want everything. And if we don't get it, then this love is not working. Y'all, that's not love. Love is not self-seeking. Love is selfless. That's real love. And that's the kind of love we want. We want a selfless love that is selfless for us and vice versa. Love is not self-seeking. Just know that. Number seven. Now, I don't like this, but I'm, whatever. This is my opinion. I don't think jealousy in a relationship is cute. People think that, or entertainment shows us that if someone is jealous, it's cute. It ain't cute to me. It ain't cute to me if you are jealous. It's not. Like, I can understand when we deal with jealousy, we do. But that does that doesn't negate whether or not you like me or not because you're jealous. I, I don't like it. Don't be jealous. Even sometimes I deal with jealousy. We all know. We all do. But I don't, I'm not proud of it. I don't want to be like, because I'm jealous, you know that I love you. No, jealousy is not cute. All right, number eight. This is important that we have to have a heart of a servant in all relationships, not just dating relationships, but friendships, family. Sometimes I think that we're like, what can you do for me? How can you serve me? What can you do for me? Yada, yada, yada. No, I want to be a servant. I want to have a heart of a servant. How can I serve you? How can I take care of you? How can I love you? How can I make you feel better? I mean, what, like, that's what heart of a servant. We are very selfish. That goes back to the selfish love. Like, what can you do for me? No, God showed us that he had a heart of a servant. He came down for us and served us. And we can do that with others. Number nine, that person should be your be all. That person should be your everything. That is not true. Y'all, we put people on pedestals that they cannot stand up on. And then we're disappointed when they don't. There is a certain place in our hearts that only God can fill. There's a hole in our heart that only God can fill. And our loved one cannot fill it. And it is wrong for us to try to make them feel that because they cannot. I just want to let you know. And the thing of the matter is, this is how I see it. So when I get married, it's going to be God first and then my husband. Yeah, he is way, way important because he is second only to God. But he is not in the place of God. He is not my everything. He is not my all in all. And it can't be like that because they can't stand up on that. And it's unhealthy. So watch that. Number 10. This is huge. Music shows this. Like I am a man's tool and he is my tool. Uh-uh, y'all, we are not each other's sex tools. I am not your tool to use. You're not my tool to use. No, we are not each other's tools. We should be treasuring each other and love each other, not use each other for our own gain, our own purposes. It's not right. Number 11, people, entertainment teaches us that love is perfect. It's not, and it's never gonna be perfect. The only person who has perfect love is God, and we know that we cannot be perfect. And if we are looking and striving for this perfect love, we're not gonna find it. Love is not perfect. It's not perfect. It could be godly, but it can't be perfect. Just know that. Um, this is a side note too. This is a random side note. But have y'all noticed that entertainment shows black women to be raunchy? Like raunchy. Like in movies, we look raunchy. We just be going around having sex with everybody, showing our body, doing whatever, being raunchy. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't betray us like that. No. Why can't we be betrayed? Why can't we be betrayed as wholesome and pure? And the thing is, why are we promoting and supporting these movies that show us to be raunchy, nasty women? Uh-uh. That's just a whole side note that has nothing to do with this. But let me tell you something. We are classy and sassy, okay? Not raunchy. Not raunchy. But just let you know that. Number 12, and this is the biggest one to me and the most important one to me. Sex is not the sign that I love you. 
I feel like entertainment is showing us that if I'm in a relationship, and this is boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, not marriage, boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, that I have to have sex with you to show you that I love you. Or that you have to have sex with me to show me that you love me. And if we don't have sex, we don't love each other. That is not true. One, sex is for marriage. God set it up for marriage and it is meant for marriage. So if we are dating, we shouldn't be having sex. But also don't ever, 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 ever make me feel that I have to have sex with you to show you that I love you in a dating relationship. That is ridiculous. And it is a shame that we are putting this pressure on men and women that they have to have sex to be loved. That's not true. That's not true. We have all these people feeling pressured and they're feeling like, like if my body is not yours, then I don't love you. That's not true. That is not true. And that's not a sign of love. I want a relationship where we're not having sex for me to show you that I love you. But once we get married, then, okay, let it, let it come. But not when we're dating. No siree. And stop showing these people this. Stop showing these people or these women or these men that they have to give themselves up to be loved. And then they give themselves up and you dump them months later. And then they feel low about themselves because they showed you that you love them and it didn't matter. Y'all, we got to be better. We got to teach our kids better. That is not true. That is not true. And that makes me so mad. As you could tell, let me slow down because I'm getting mad. That makes me mad. It makes me mad. And I realized that in television that all these shows, all these movies are showing these people in relationships having sex. And it's weird. It is weird. Even for me, it's weird if we don't see a sex scene in a movie because we're like, that's natural. It isn't. That's not how it's supposed to be. And I'm not going to let entertainment teach me that that's how it's supposed to be. So I just want to let you guys know that. But we're going to read real quick. So those are all my little points. But I wanted to show you guys a place in the Bible where there is real love. And we're going to see this. So this is in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And my sister talked about this when she was talking, doing her talk the first week. And I just love it. This is what real love is. Are you guys ready? So love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? It seems like an impossible thing to reach as well. But that's why God's with us is to teach us how to love, to teach us how to love. This is the kind of love I want in a, in a romantic relationship and in friendship relationships. This is the kind of love I want and this is the kind of love I want to give. And I do not want entertainment to teach me anymore about love because it doesn't have it right. It's wrong. And the way that it's teaching us is not working. It ain't working. And y'all know it's not working. And I don't want to follow it anymore. I want to follow what God's way of love is because God's way of love is better than any love, any love that anybody can teach me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today. And I just want to say, let's fight for love. There's a fight on love for entertainment and we have got to fight it. We have got to fight it. We have to know that what it's teaching us is not right and it's not going to work. But what this word, what this book teaches us about love is right. What this book teaches us about love is right. And we have to begin to follow it and walk like it so that we can see change in our life. And I'm like you guys, I watch entertainment. I know sometimes, I know, I know what I'm seeing. But I also know that it's not, it's, it doesn't work. So I just wanted to encourage you guys in that today. And I just wanted to ch chat with you guys on my personal opinion on entertainment and what it's teaching us about love and how I'm not about them shenanigans. And so we're just going to pray out. Oh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this YouTube. Follow the blog, www.instinctivelyroyal.com. We have two videos this week because I have to make it for last week. So we'll do entertainment this week on this Tuesday and then Thursday there'll be another video. Also next month is going to be all written vlogs. So I'll talk about that later. But I just want to pray us out and then we'll get going. Father God, we love you and we praise you. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would show us what true love is and what true love isn't. Father God, we pray, Lord, that you would clean our minds from the things that the world and entertainment has taught us is love and is not. In the name of Jesus, help us to stand firm on what you said in Corinthians, that love is patient and kind and does not envy. Father God, help us to speak those things of ourselves. Help us to look at the, at the way people are loving us, Father God, and to recognize love. And Father God, help us to love other people, Father God, so that we can accept the kind of love that you have for us. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, that you love us unconditionally. And we rest in that peace. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye.